So good evening, everyone. Uh, what I, what Candy and I, and you know some of the other members thought we'd do tonight is um, give an opportunity for the Democratic candidates for the U.S. Senate to come to Worcester to talk to the um, the policymakers and um, and opinion leaders in the city, and those are the, those are us. And uh, we need to learn a little bit about our candidates. Um, you know, one of the things that has been um, uh, very important here in Worcester is to get to know the people that are running. And right now we're lucky to have five of the six declared candidates uh, here in Worcester. They cared enough to come out. Uh, everyone knows that the president is speaking tonight and um, talking about jobs and the economy, and I'm sure that these candidates are going to talk about that. And there's, also a, uh, there's also a debate tonight for the uh, District 1 City Council race, so uh, some of the members are, um, are at that. Uh, just so everybody knows, this isn't really a debate. Uh, this is a forum, just a get-to-know-you type of thing. Candidates were good enough to come here about a half hour early, so they met a lot of people, uh, talked issues. I know that people were asking specific questions. And what I thought we would do is just give them an opportunity to talk to you as a group, uh, give each candidate five minutes uh, to talk to, the, talk to you, explain who they are, why they're running, and uh, what they think is important in this U.S. Senate race. And then, give an opportunity. We'll we'll ask you know one question, two if there's a uh, if there's time permitting. But we're trying to uh, do this quickly and and uh, get as much information to you as possible. Uh, after talking with a couple of members, we didn't think it was a um, a good idea to to uh, have questions from the audience. So that I'm sure the candidates will stick around. If you have any specific questions that I'm covered in their speeches, um, then we will. Um, uh, you can talk to them afterwards. But. You know, first I'd like to, um, I guess we can go by uh, uh, alphabetical order here. I'd like to introduce Tom Conroy, state representative from the 13th district in uh, Middlesex County. Uh, before representing the people of Lincoln, Sudbury, and Wayland, he worked for Senator Gary Hart and served as a foreign policy advisor and national security advisor for Senator Barbara Molesky. Representative Tom Conroy. Excuse me, uh, I'm going to give you a one minute warning when you're close to one minute remaining. Okay. I'll just raise my hand and they will. Sure. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you all for inviting me here. I'm here to hopefully earn your support. Uh, as Vincent said, I am Tom Conroy. I am a state representative from Whalen and served there for the past five years. I'm also a former businessman who's worked for 16 years at small and large businesses right here in Massachusetts. Um, I have spent the past two months walking around the state uh, to over 125 cities and towns. I spent some time in Worcester. It was a delightful uh, day and a half here. Uh, and met a lot of great folks, a lot, uh, some of the folks in this room as well. And uh, I have been uh, embedding myself and really grounding myself on this walk over the course of the past two months in the very real day-to-day -day lives of folks just like you all throughout this Commonwealth and the very real challenges that a lot of people are facing. And here's some of what I've heard. People are anxious, and people want jobs. They want, if, if they don't have a job now, they want job opportunities. If they do have a job, they want job security. They want good, reliable, steady, decent pay jobs with decent wages and decent benefits. And they want union jobs, they want reliable jobs, they want full-time jobs. And that's what my agenda is all about. So I say, uh, to you and to uh, everybody out there that what we need to do is we need to cash in that Cold War dividend that we did never cashed in 20 years ago when the Cold War ended. We need to cut back on what we're doing in Iraq and Afghanistan. We need to bring that money home. And we need to start a public works jobs program here uh, in the United States to put people back to work. Carpenters, electricians, pipe fitters, and sheet metal workers, and engineers. I have walked around the state and seen our crumbling infrastructure. And I have seen people ask time and time again for job opportunities. It's very simple. Let's put the two things together. Let's, let's use that, uh, that money that we've been spending on 200 bases around the, the world and bring it home, put people back to work, and get this economy going again. And, I, and there's proof here in Worcester about how effective that infrastructure build can be. You've got a psychiatric hospital that you're building right here, $300 million of state money. You're putting local roofers, uh, who I talked to earlier today, and carpenters back to work, and electricians and pipe fitters. 
you've got a $90 million UMass Medical Center Life Sciences building that's going up that I helped uh, support, and I know Vincent and John and, and uh, others uh, helped to support. I don't know if Jimmy was uh, in the legislature at the time in 2008 when we passed that bill, but this is putting people in Worcester back to work every day with good, steady jobs, and that's what we need in this country, that's what we need, we need as a state, and that's what I'm going to be advocating for. Secondly, what did I learn as I went around the state? I learned that business and government are not working together. The private sector, and I, I've worked in the private sector, it's got flaws and I've seen its dark side, and I will hold businesses accountable when they are misguided. But the fact is that the private sector generates about 80% of the jobs in this, in this world, in this country. And small businesses in particular need a helping hand. And I believe that government and business need to work together in public-private partnerships like I have done over my 16 years of my business uh, experience. I've got an education in economics, business, and finance. I know how to create these kind of partnerships. I know how CEOs and CFOs are making decisions by hiring. Uh, we, can, we can gather groups together and connect business and government together in a way that will create new jobs in Worcester and in Massachusetts, and that's another top priority of mine. Thirdly, we need to get Washington functioning again. Congress is not listening to the people's priorities. I heard that time and again uh, on my walk, and we need to get Congress to pay attention to what the people really want. Uh, health care costs are rising. I'm working on lowering health care costs at the state, uh, state house as the vice chairman of the Health Care Finance Committee. Uh, people are worried about the value of their homes and their retirement savings. I have introduced uh, laws that have been passed at the state level to protect those, those retirement savings. We have to get focused on the right priorities, and I have heard those throughout uh, this walk that I took. Now, I know I'm running out of time. Last thing, I am the candidate that I believe is best equipped to beat Scott Brown. I know Scott Brown. We served together in the State House. Uh, he was my state senator. I unfortunately hadn't worked together with the guy. You put me in a room in a debate and allow me to go head to head with that guy and I will bury his candidacy for re-election. Um, I know why he is always uh, controlled by handlers. I know why he won't beat people in his Senate office. I know why he won't have open town meetings. I know his vulnerabilities. I know his weaknesses. I'm the guy that can beat Scott Brown. I've got the background, the experience, uh, the legislation. I'm the only one in this candidacy, in this Democratic race, who know, who has a proven track record of beating incumbent Republicans. So keep that in mind as you're thinking about how important it is to win back this seat for the Democrats in 2012. Thank you very much. Thanks, Scott. Thank you.